Well guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Hartung Family Farms. And today is realistically probably the last nice day that we are gonna have for a little while. Cause we're gonna get snow on Tuesday. <laughs> I don't want it, but we're gonna get snow on Tuesday, but for right now, we're gonna make hay while the sun shines, as we say it. So we're gonna actually be combining some corn this afternoon. We're hopefully gonna get everything running. We're crossing our fingers, probably not gonna happen, but we're gonna try and get the wet band full tonight. So we'll see what we can happen, but first off, Got some priorities. Hartung Family Farms has its first official partner or sponsorship. We just got a set of Midland, four sets of Midland Micro Mobile sent to us. So uh, a little bit back on this, our communication is terrible within the field. So I reached out to a couple of companies, see what's the best and Midland decided to set us up. So huge thank you to them. We're gonna get put them to the test. As you guys know, we have some really hilly terrain, really hard talking with the field from uh, from combine to combine, combine to grain cart in the, uh, with our old system. So we really are looking forward to getting these in the cabs. So let's go ahead. I, have n I don't know anything about these things, but I'm gonna go ahead and try and put it in our piece of our equipment right now. And I'll, I'll take you guys along with, just to see how easy or difficult these are to install. Ooh, this looks new. Well, not new, but we decided to ditch the 30 foot, the 20 foot head. It's a 20 foot bean head this year and uh, rent slash borrow our neighbor's 30 foot auger head. That's for the 2588. So we should really be able to knock some beans out this year. Have two 30 footers running. That's gonna be really nice. But for right now, let's try and get this micro mobile in the, in the 7088 because I think we're gonna try and hook the 12 row onto the 70 tonight and run corn. Not much. Putting some radios in. Here's the micro mobile. That's literally all that's in the packaging. That's what it is here. So let's open this up. So actually guys, I lied. So I see we have our old radio in here right now, which I'm not sure. It's a Radio Shack radio, I'm not quite sure, but I think I'm gonna go ahead, mount the first one in the Steiger and see if I can talk to it between the Steiger, between that Midland and this one, because I don't think the Combine one is terrible in right now. So I might just install one just for tonight, but I'm not quite sure. Alrighty, so midway through, Installing the micro mobile, it looks actually pretty simple. It just looks like a 12 volt adapter. Plug that in, mount, and then mount the spot for the radio and the mic, pretty good to go. So it looks pretty simple, but I'll let you guys know. But midway through that, I got a call from Curtis saying he needs a laptop, the iPad up at uh, Butch's, so pack and feed cattle. Well, there they are feeding cattle. I'm gonna head back and keep installing radios. You guys wanna see something cool? You don't see this every day. It's our 966 feet of wagon tractor. Everything's split in half. Here's actually the engine. Took all the tops off, I believe we're rebuilding it. So basically your pistons, your six cylinders go right in here. And that's your main output. Transmission's underneath there. Pretty neat. All right guys, here's what I got. So it realistically took me about a half hour to install this thing, but I don't think I did it. It could have been a lot quicker. Biggest thing was my mounting locations. I had to drill a hole through this to this mounting bolt. But realistically, this micro mobile is actually pretty quick to install. So there's three things. Cigarette, power to your cigarette lighter, antenna, which went to the top of the cab, and then really just my then uh, my walkie, my microphone, and then all I had to do is just mount up the, the mounting bracket. The only downside is I used too big of a bolt and I had to mount it up inside, upside down. But that's all right. Honestly, A for how easy these things install, a to A minus. There's a little bit of kind of tricky things. There's a lot of cord right here. I just kind of have it zipped up right now, but that's good though, because it gives you plenty of flexibility. So now we just got to kind of put another one on there and see if it'll talk. And I want to see if it'll talk to our current, our current two ways that we got in our uh, combine right now. Alrighty, so I got the second micro mobile mounted on this, these two machines. So one on the 400, one on this case. So Honestly, it's really not too bad. The hardest part was just finding hardware to fit the, I couldn't find a small enough nut. So that's on my fault. That's on my end. So now let's get this, let's get the pit ready and let's get ready to shell corn. Yummy. That's what our conveyor looks like. So we're getting our leg ready right now. We just switched over last year. This is our dry leg. We had our just dumping straight dry corn into our bins. But this year, obviously it's gonna be really wet, so we switched it back over. This is our wet leg. It'll go all the way up top and dump it into our wet bin, which eventually goes into our dryer. I'll do a full video on our drying system here shortly or soon, but basically just kind of scraping all this stuff out. There's a lot of crap in here. I'm gonna grease everything, grease the loadout, loading station, back out all the water. Hopefully gonna run corn tonight. There's Curtis backing out the 25. The eventual goal to hook, get the 70 out, get it on the head. 
get it ran off. Farmer's fun, most fun job right now. Well, second, climbing the leg and greasing that's the first, most fun. Sucking out the kit. Hooking up the 7088, the falling corner, 12 roll corn head. Got her hooked up. Thank you. Go hook up. Yeah. Curtis is the 400 firing up. Things are cooking like an oven right now. All right, let's hook the wires up to this corn head, unfold it, and check everything over. Look at this wizardry. You just look at it. This thing was a heck of an addition to our fleet. There's a folding 12 row corn head in general. We will never buy another, brand, another new corn head without being a folding. Now we're gonna run it off after we greased everything. Auger. And roll. All right, so now I'm going to take the 400 over next door. I'm going to go grab, set this thing up next to the gra next to the grain cart. We are going to hook that up tonight. Uh, we're not going to get much combining in. I have a fr I'm a f I have a bad film, but I got to grab the red the red semi, and I'm going to take two loads of dry dry corn out of the good out of the big bin, the gr corn we got left, and then I'm going to put that in the wet bin. So that way we don't have wet corn sitting in there for the next I don't know, however long. Because the wet bin is, isn't coned out. So you want to have what's going to sit in there for a while. You want to have that, you want to have that dry so it's not wet and getting hot. All right, got the 400 ready to pull that grain cart out. And now, what in the world? All right, that's interesting. Looks like we had a water barrel fly away. Must have had some good wind. So I'm gonna take the, the red truck, get it fired up, and get ready to move. I really hope this mic is working. My mic is broken. So I really didn't explain that that well, and I do apologize, but basically, the wet bin, it's not hopper bottom. So what we gotta do is we gotta put dry corn all the way coned around. So when we when the wet bin's taking grain out, it just takes in the sun from the center, so it leaves a cone around the outside. We want that to be dry corn. That can't be wet corn because Wet corn, when it sits for more than a week, it gets hot and it spoils and bad things happen. Going her up. First load of the year going in. better. He says grab the two pound hammer, but I have no clue where anything is in this shop. It's a little bit of a mess. Here's a corn looks like when it's falling from my leg. It's coming down with a lot of velocity. All right, now I'm going to go pick up Curtis. He went down to Pat's place. I'm going to pick him up, then he's going to go hook up the red, big red grain cart to the 400. And Pat and him are going to go set the combine. I am going to dump this load, fill up another one of dry corn, dump that in, then head over to his plate, head over to Jerry's. We're going to combine Jerry's first. That was the field we did first. And then we're going to hopefully get cutting. All right, now we're going to hook up the 400 to the 1082 grain cart. It's always fun getting this out of here, especially when we can't go left. This is going to be a lot of fun. The 1082 hooking it up right now. There's our old drive over deck. This thing hasn't seen the light of day since last December. 
Right? Hold up. Good. Might hit those blue tubs, but that's all right. I don't know either. I don't, I don't remember, remember getting out of this way. This is not working. Probably gonna have to get the seven test. Well guys, I do apologize if the mic is not working. I bent it, I broke it. Uh, I need to get a new one here soon. So, but right now I'm gonna get the seven out because we need to get that to get the uh, grain cart out. Cause that 400 just can't do it. Just gotta pull it out with old reliable. 706. That's right, 400, take that. For those of you guys who don't follow me on Instagram, you guys are missing out on this great dumping picture. First one of the year. So, for those of you guys who don't, follow us on, fa on Facebook and Instagram at Hartson Family Farm, same spelling. A little late to the party, I know guys, but we're finally starting to harvest corn. This is still dry corn, but one more dry corn load, and I should have a load of wet corn ready to go in. All right, here's an update for you guys. I'm on my last load, or second load. We didn't make it very far combining. Pat evidently either broke a gathering chain or a sprocket on the corn head. That's one thing we haven't looked at this year, so it does not surprise me. So we didn't make it very far. So Pat's gonna bring the combine back here, try to get it fixed, and maybe get a load tonight. We'll see. Alrighty, just finished up with this. So the Gehringhoff needs all change in sprockets. Should have gotten to it. it in preseason, but we didn't so what do you do so i'm gonna shut the leg off probably gonna quit for the night unless we switch heads but i doubt we will let's go find out listen to this all this corn gonna fall because when i shut the leg off there's always a little bit of corn that's always dinking around and it just falls like around all right time time to play super trucker oh not really i'm just pulling it next door but i gotta back this thing onto the road because uh our driveway going over there is blocked Gotta remember where the lights are on this thing. Boom. All right, let's back this thing up. Car coming. This is not sketchy at all. Just lucky I'm uh, actually halfway decent semi driver. Closing the tarp. Not gonna lie, having a flashlight handy is pretty nice when you're trying to video. Alrighty, so I'm just putting the last middle and radios on there. I got three out of four in there. I'm just putting the one in the new Holland right now. Very simple. The hardest part is just figuring out where I want them. If I'm being completely honest, guys, they are as easy as everyone has been saying. I'm not just making that up. I'm gonna be straight with you guys. If something is not good with these things, I will let you guys know. But anyway, I, I do like them so far. I haven't, I do like how easy they are to set up, I should say, so far. I haven't uh, had a chance to use them in the field yet, so we will see there how the range is. The range is going to be the biggest important, biggest thing for our farm. We have some hills. It, our current radios suck, so the biggest, like I said, the biggest thing is range for us. So, like I said, I'll get the three out of the four on there. It's really simple. Just hook up the antenna, hook up the power, and then hook up figuring out where the bracket's the hardest part. So, but anyway, so I'm just getting those. The reason we weren't comp we aren't combining right now is because our gathering chains and sprockets are all shot. Yeah, that's the old one, that's the new one. You can kind of see how this sprocket, the oldest sprocket's about an inch longer on both ends. That's not good. Chain stretch over time, that's just wear, so we just gotta replace all those. We'll do that probably tomorrow sometime. Goal for tomorrow is, I'm gonna be out here around noon or so. Goal for tomorrow is to fill the wet bin full of corn and maybe try some beans. We'll see. So, but anyway guys, I'm just gonna put that last Midland radio in and call it a night. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video of our corn harvest prep. If you guys did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Hard Tongue Family Farms. And of course, guys, as always, ta-ta for now. Also, huge thanks to Midland for providing us with those radios and, and partnering with us. We look forward to getting Midland's products out there for you guys. We're excited to kind of try them out and see how they are. We won't sugarcoat it. So we look forward to that and look forward to kind of trying those new products out.